many, many people say that they have people that they network with, people that they refer. Whenever I do that portion of my spirit of your company business practices, I usually find out that while people think they're doing that, they aren't actually doing that. They can't even produce a list of the tribe of 12 they need to do that. And that's a eye-opener for them. The other thing we learn about American culture and American life is that there are people who will lay down their life for us and there are others that won't. The funny part is who we pick to marry because will they really lay down their life for you is a real test that nobody wants to ask them to do. But how you test a person in life is to give them two or three challenges to determine whether or not they're going to be worth it in your lifetime to be with. And openly the first test task is really simple. You simply ask them to deliver some money in its fullness and its entirety to someone who's impoverished. To see whether or not the individual who's supposed to be your life partner will override your decision. It's not their money. It wasn't their time that brought about that income. And openly you want to know that they will within a 95% degree of accuracy, deliver what you've asked them to do. The reason there might be a 5% discrepancy is because it's very possible that through casual conversation of your partner with that situation, the partner might learn some details that could totally change what you might be okay with doing. And in that moment of time, their obligation is to pick up the phone, send you a text message, or send you an email to let you know what they learned and ask you what they want you to do. The other things that we can do to evaluate people is to see how they interact with our families and friends. Are they always trying to play one upsmanship? Are they always trying to put down our children? Are they always trying to insult us in front of everyone? Or do they really try to raise you up on eagle's wings? In other words, will they stand up for you no matter what you say or what you do? And will they handle you if you start to produce a, sink, a stink, meaning they can walk over and say, come on, honey, it's time to go. Or, hey, babe, let me help you here before you lose the show. You see, everyone has a right to have a temper tantrum. It's true. Everyone has a right to be a bitch on wheels. That is also true. But the problem is what happens afterwards. How do you repair it? How do you withstand it? How do you deal with your own reputation? The reality is sometimes our reputations precede us and we didn't even do anything to earn them. Do you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes we get a bad rap when we did nothing wrong. But the truth is sometimes we have to own it. And how you own it in life is really owning up to it. Did you participate in an intimate conversation with someone? If you did, then own up to it. Did you go out on a couple of dates with someone where they paid for you? Then own up to it. If you had tons of video conversations, that's one thing. If you had a lot of text messaging between one another every day, that's another. And if you'd spent the time when you were feeling blue calling that friend you knew, then perhaps, just perhaps, God knows more than you. You see, the reality of life is that our partners in our life, our lifetime partners in life, have to be more like our best friends because our best friends care for us in a different way. But when we're talking about intimate relationships, we of course have to give them a chance to see that maybe what you're thinking isn't anything what is reality today.